the, the responsibility of this board is to carry out locally the Commonwealth policy to preserve wetlands and to accommodate economic activities so as to prevent that disfoliation. Should we make a motion for the um, Chess Bay Board, or should we wait until the Chess Bay Board is called? We'll wait until Chess Bay. Yes, sir. Now, we had uh, roll call, please. Mm -hmm. Mr. Rodley? Here. Mr. Waltrip? Here. Mr. Hughes? Here. Uh, Mr. Apperson and Mr. Gusman are both absent. I'll have a chance to look at the minutes. Any corrections, additions, deletions? The minutes, nope. um, I guess we need a roll call vote for that. Uh, Mr. Rodley? Approved the minutes. Yes. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Mr. Waltrip? Yes. And Mr. Hughes? Yes. We have one public hearing tonight. That's W2218, uh, 7624, sure. Uncle's Neck. Okay. Do they make it a motion? Oh, John is the chair. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Mike Wilson here to present case uh, uh, W2218 at 7624 Uncle's Neck Road. Mr. Daniel Winall, Water's Edge Construction, has applied for a wetlands permit on behalf of Mark and Catherine Gillespie to protect the shoreline by providing two rock sills and beach nourishment with plantings on property located at 7624 Uncle's Neck. Rock sills are proposed to be 45 feet long with a 15 foot bottom width. They are comprised of class one core stone, overlaying with class two armor stone, with the top of the structure at 3.5 feet mean sea level. There will be a 36 foot gap riverside uh, between the two structures. The intervening area between the structures will be filled with approximately 40 tons of clean beach sand and uh, certain areas planted. Construction access will be through the upland. On April 20th, 2018, staff visited the site along with representatives from the Corps of Engineers and the Virginia Marine Resources Commission to discuss the proposed project. At that time of the year, there were no herbaceous tidal wetland vegetation at present. Based upon staff knowledge of the Uncle's Neck shoreline along the Chickahominy River, there will be some pockets of sedges and pickerel weed and three square in uh, uh, isolation along the intertidal zone due to the shaded nature of the shoreline. <clears throat> what I'm trying to suggest is there might be some uh, wetland impact with this project. Currently, as proposed, um, there are no t uh, vegetated tidal wetland impacts. <clears throat> the state does have a no net loss of tidal wetlands, uh, vegetated tidal wetlands policy. This project does meet that even if there happen to be some select uh, vegetated wetland impacts, they are proposing to plant 500 square feet of Spartina altiniflora and Spartina patens. <clears throat> staff does recommend approval of this application and should the board wish to approve, staff suggests the following conditions be incorporated into that approval. That the applicant obtain any other necessary state, local, federal permits as required. Prior to construction, a pre-construction meeting be held on site. Um, at that pre-construction meeting, the limits of the upland disturbance shall be clearly marked and the limits of the rock sill, sill structures shall be clearly delineated. A surety in the form of $1,000 be held uh, to guarantee the no net loss wetland policy and the wetland plantings. The planting shall be inspected one year post planting and shall have a minimum survival rate of 90%. All development activities located in the special flood hazard area shall comply with Article 6, Division 3 floodplain area regulations of the James City County Zoning Ordinance and receive all required approvals and permits prior to the commen commencement of such activities. That this wetlands permit shall expire May 9th, 2019 if construction has not begun and that if an extension of the permit is needed, a written request shall be submitted to the Stormwater and Resource Protection Division no later than one year or six weeks prior to the expiration date. I direct you to your monitors. Um, the applicant is requesting to protect their shoreline uh, at 7624 Uncle's Neck Road using rock sills and beach nourishment. 
project location here at the end of Uncle's Neck Road. Some of the topography of the site, floodplain area for the site, RPA as it affects this project. From the site plan application, uh, the, their entire shoreline, they're only focused in on this part here. <clears throat> you also see, and I'll mention it, a pier and uh, boat lift, those are uh, exempt from the local board's jurisdiction. We are concerned with the rock sill structures, the beach nourishment, and the planting areas. Photographs of the site, um, can't see them in this photo yet, but the site, the rock sill structures have been uh, staked. See in the water, 45 feet away from the shoreline. That's the one looking from the center of the project, looking towards the north, northernmost uh, sill structure. It's going to be in this location, just on the other side of this tree. And it's going to extend out into the water there. From the other, looking at the, uh, the southern structure, there's a stake here. The second stake is up against this bank here, and the structure is going to go this way, out into the water at that location. The proposal is to uh, fill in this area with beach sand and then do some uh, slight grading to cut back this vertical bank. This bank is approximately three to five feet tall. Uh, in this location, and several of these uh, uh, trees will have to be removed. Uh, that is all. The RPA impacts were not significant enough in staff's opinion to warrant a, a corresponding Chesapeake Bay application for uh, this shoreline work. And then from the center of the project, looking out through the gap in the structures, this gap between these two is 36 foot. This structure goes this way, and this structure will go this way. Again, permit uh, conditions should the board wish to approve this wetlands permit, that any other necessary federal, state, and local permits as required for the project be obtained, that a pre-construction meeting be held on site, that the limits of the upland uh, disturbance be flagged and the uh, limits of the rock sill structures be, be marked. That a surety of $1,000 guaranteed uh, is required to guarantee the plantings, to guarantee the no net loss uh, policy. That the plantings be inspected one year post planting to uh, ensure 90% survivability. That any development located in the floodplain uh, meet the James City County Zoning Ordinance and receive any required approvals. That the expiration date for this permit be May 9th, 2019, and that any written request for extension be submitted to our office no later than six weeks prior to that uh, deadline. We have to answer the questions the board may have regarding this application. Mr. Chairman, um, Mr. Wilson, I, I noticed in the photographs there is active erosion on the property. Um, I can't tell from these images, does it extend further beyond this area that they're proposing? <clears throat> it does, um, but the, the nature, it does go further north up the Chickahominy River, but the nature of the slope in that area is less severe. It is already uh, semi-stabilized itself. The applicant is aware they may have to do further shoreline restoration work in the future, um, but they did. They wanted to tackle this part where it was actively eroding. In terms of the configuration of the sill structures, um, uh, a little bit more perpendicular to shore than than parallel, as we sometimes see. Um, is there a 
compelling uh, issue there? There's not an issue um, from my standpoint. I would let uh, Mr. Winall address those concerns uh, as to the exact configuration. Mr. Wilson, it appeared to be some uh, concrete and uh, other rubble uh, in the area where the, uh, uh, you've got a picture of that one, you know, those, a concrete slab there. Are they going to remove all of that? Um, actually, that is uh, not a concrete slab. That is a, um, a redneck uh, <laughs> uh, platform that is tied to the tree. It's a... <laughs> Uh, it's a four by eight sheet of plywood with some uh, two by sixes, and it just kind of floats in the water, fit a little jumping off point. Yes, that'll be removed. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions? Uh, we'll uh, open the public hearing. Would anybody care to make comment? Evening, Mr. Rowley, Mr. Walter, Mr. Hughes. Um, I'm Danny Winall. I'm the agent for the for the homeowner and the contractor doing the work. Uh, to address your concern about the shoreline, uh, the most erosion in those, on this site is right in the area where we're proposing to do the work. Most of the shoreline is protected by a grove of cypress trees. This particular reach of the shoreline, there's aren't any cypress trees, so there's pretty it's pretty extensive erosion right there where we're proposing those sills. But the rest of the shoreline is pretty stable. It's a couple of little pockets here and there of some minor erosion, but it wasn't enough to warrant a revetment or a major project. It's, it's fairly stable all along that shoreline. Uh, and also, the upper river end of the property is like elevation 20 at the top of the slope. At this part of the project, it's elevation 8, so it minimizes the bank grade and it makes it easy to get down to the pier steps or anything. It was actually a perfect place to do it, and it was where the, most of the erosion was on the project. And that plywood he's referring to is just a small work float we use to get out to put our stakes. We just staked it out there. We'll take care of that when we uh, do, the, do the actual work. Uh, in terms of the alignment of the of the sills uh, in a more perpendicular fashion, I realize they're canted, but um, yeah, that had more of the orientation of the shoreline. There, we were trying to work around some trees, some cypress trees, and uh, we wanted to leave a you know at least a thirty to 35 to 40 foot open and out on the outboard end. And there was a natural pocket beach there to begin with, so we're kind of simulating what was there originally with the sills. If we did something parallel to shoreline, it really, in that short of a distance, it just really, I don't think it would work quite as well. So we're just trying to simulate the pocket beach was originally there to begin with. What is the depth at the end of the end of those structures? Do you recall? Uh, it is probably minus one. Very it's shallow. Probably, real shallow. In fact, on the southwest full moon, it's completely, you know, it's, it's no water there at all. Thank you. Other questions? Thank you. Jeff. Would anybody else care to speak on this application? If not, we'll close the public hearing and go to discussion. Any thoughts? It's a well-deserved uh, project here. It was a lot of erosion. Care to make a motion? Yes, I'll make a motion that we... Uh, eighteen seventeen. Here we have a motion to approve. Um, can we have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Rodley? Yes. Mr. Waltrip? Yes. Mr. Hughes? Yes. Have um, granted the permit. Do we have any board considerations? I don't think so. Um, do we, no matters of special privilege. Do we have a motion to adjourn? No. Okay. Adjourn. The uh, next uh, issue will be the Chesapeake Bay Board. Uh, we don't have a chairman, uh, and I would like to uh, nominate Mr. Rodley to be the uh, acting chairman tonight. Except it's all yours, sir. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to call to order the James City County Chesapeake Bay Board for its May 9th, 2018 meeting. It is the responsibility of this board to carry out locally the Commonwealth policy to protect against and minimize pollution and deposition of sediment in wetlands, streams, and lakes in James City County, which are tributaries to the Chesapeake Bay. 
Can I have a roll call, please? Mm -hmm. Mr. Rudley? Here. Mr. Waltrip? Here. Mr. Hughes? Here. And Mr. Apperson and Mr. Gusman are absent. We have the minutes from the April 11th uh, work session and the April 11th, 2018 regular board meeting. Is there any discussion? Vote, uh, we'll call vote to approve. Mr. Rodley? Yes. Mr. Waltrip? Yes. Mr. Hughes? Yes. We have three public hearings tonight, the first being CBE-18-074 at 233 Richard Brewster, retaining wall. Mr. Long? Uh, Mr. Chair, if I may, just uh, want to bring up one point before we start our public hearings. Um, we do only have three members, which is a quorum, but the bylaws do state that we need a minimum of three positive votes for a motion to pass. I want to make sure the public is aware of that. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Even Mr. Chair, members of the board, Trevor Long, James City County Watershed Planner, here to present CBE-18-074, 233 Richard Brewster. Mr. James Sizemore of Dogwood Contracting has applied for a Chesapeake Bay exception on behalf of Brian and Diane Magoon for encroachments into the RPA buffer for the construction of a retaining wall on property located at 233 Richard Brewster within the Colson's Crossing section of the Kings Mill subdivision and the College Creek watershed. The parcel was platted in 1983 prior to the adoption of the Chesapeake Bay Preservation Ordinance in 1990. The proposed scope of work result, um, results in 105.3 square feet of encroachment into the RPA. To date, the applicant has not submitted a mitigation plan. However, require mitigation for the proposed scope of work is one mitigation unit. Staff has evaluated the application and exception requests for the construction of a retaining wall and finds that the application meets the conditions in section 23-11 and 23-14 and the application should be heard by the board because the retaining wall is considered an accessory structure. The exception granting body is permitted to require reasonable and appropriate conditions in granting the exception request in accordance with section 23-14. Chesapeake Bay Board should fully consider Chesapeake Bay exception CBE-18-074 as outlined and presented above and review the request for exemption along with the WQIA. The board may grant the exception with such conditions and safeguards as deemed necessary to further the proposed and intent, purpose and intent of County's Chesapeake Bay Preservation Ordinance. Staff has reviewed the application and exception request and has determined impacts associated with the proposal to be minor for the proposed development. Staff does recommend approval for this exception request with the following conditions incorporated into the approval that the applicant obtain all other necessary federal, state, and local permits, the applicant submit a mitigation plan consistent with county requirements, uh, a surety of $250 will be required in a form acceptable to the county's attorney's office to guarantee the mitigation plan including plantings, the applicant record an affidavit in the land records of the Williamsburg James City County Circuit Court regarding the environmental resource restrictions on this lot, and that the exception request approval become null and void if construction has not begun by May 9th, 2019, with written requests for an extension uh, be submitted to the Stormwater Resource Protection Division no later than six weeks prior to the expiration date. Again, the applicant request is to construct a retaining wall uh, at property located at 233 Richard Brewster within the Kings Mill subdivision as shown in the vicinity map above. Aerial photography, uh, the aerial photograph shows um, bird's eye view of where the scope of the project will take place. Some topography as it affects the, the parcel. And the resource protection area in the lot in question. <clears throat> above is the site plan uh, indicating the 100-foot buffer coming through the house. Um, a JCSA utility easement 
east of, uh, east of the house and the proposed retaining wall just south of the house. An aerial photo of the, uh, of the proposed work with the retaining wall and fill behind the house. Existing sidewalk and impervious surface. And a uh, structural view of the retaining wall as it pertains to this project. Your photos of the current conditions at the house. As you can see, erosion is occurring south of the house. Again, the staff does recommend approval for this project, uh, given that all other necessary local, state, and federal permits are required. That a $250 surety um, is made acceptable to the county attorney's office with a mitigation plan, that an affidavit is recorded, and that this exception become null and void if not started by May 9th, 2019, with extensions to the request no later than six weeks prior to the expiration. I'd be happy to answer any other questions that the board may have at this time. Not a question, but more of a statement. Um, and I don't want to preempt our discussion that will occur perhaps at the next meeting on our special uh, the board meeting last month but we had talked about having an open discussion for the public so they could understand the context of that discussion um, and since we haven't had that yet and, and that hasn't transpired uh, I'm going to recommend to the board that we strike the, the requirement to record the affidavit at least for this night's meeting staff is good with that I have a question. Um, can you go back to the last photograph you showed yes. of the rear of the house? At, uh, is that a retaining wall there now? It is, yes, sir. What's, what will happen to that? Uh, my understanding is that it will be replaced. Um, however, the current retaining wall um, is not as long as uh, the proposed retaining wall. Uh, therefore, this, this uh, request is before the board. And uh, looking back where you were just a moment ago from the um, looking uphill, uh, where that retaining wall is, is that the approximate area that the uh, new retaining wall is going to be in? Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. Any additional questions for staff? I'd like to open the public hearing. Would the applicant uh, like to address the board? Uh, Brian and Diane Magoon. Okay. Good answer. Any questions you guys? Any questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Would anybody else like to speak on this matter? Hearing none, I will close the public hearing. The board matter is before the board. Any discussion? My concern was that they didn't submit a mitigation plan in advance, but um, one of the requirements is that they submit one before we, uh, the county issued the permit acceptable I have no problem with uh, making a motion to grant the exception very good um, we have a One. motion on the floor to adopt the resolution to grant the exception for Ches Bay board case CBE-18-074 at 233 Richard Brewster subject to a modification that we exclude the affidavit I have a roll call uh, mr. Roadley yes mr. Walter yes. mr. Hughes yes Thank you. We'll now go to CBE-18-086153 North Quarter. Mr. Long. Afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Trevor Long, James City County Watershed Planner, here to present CBE-18-086153 North Quarter. Mr. Ron Curtis, Ronald Curtis Builder, has applied for a Chesapeake Bay exception for encroachments into the RPA buffer for the construction of a home addition and deck extension 
on behalf of Mr. Neal and Sandy Jeswell. The property is located at 153 North Quarter within the North Quarter section of the Kings Mill subdivision and the College Creek watershed. The parcel was plowed in 1995 after the adoption of the Chesapeake Bay Preservation Ordinance in 1990 and prior to the readoption of the ordinance in 2004. RPA impacts with the proposal equate to 146 square feet of encroachment into the landward RPA. Due to the internal layout of the home, uh, room additions cannot be added elsewhere. Um, and the applicant is also proposing a deck extension in addition. Um, the applicant has surveyed the wetlands for this application and the improvements uh, encroach into the RPA once again 146 square feet. For these encroachments, the applicant has proposed two planting units for this project, consisting of two canopy trees, four understory trees, and six shrubs. <laughs> County requirements for this amount of impact uh, would only be one planting unit. Therefore, the applicant has exceeded county requirements for mitigation. A WQIA was submitted per sections 23-11 and 23-14 of the county ordinance. Uh, for the proposed land disturbing activity resulted from development or redevelopment within the RPA. The applicant has submitted the required information as outlined in the James City County Water Quality Impact Assessment <coughs> Guidelines and has submitted a mitigation proposal which doubles county requirements. Staff has reviewed the application and exception requests and has determined impacts associated with the, this proposal to be moderate for the proposed development. Staff does recommend approval of this exception request, and should the board wish to approve this exception, staff recommend that the following condition, conditions be incorporated into the approval. That the applicant obtain all other necessary <coughs> federal, state, and local permits. That a surety of $500 be, um, be made out acceptable to the county's attorney's office to guarantee the mitigation plantings. That this exception request approval become null and void if construction has not begun by May 9th, 2019, with written request for an extension to be submitted uh, no, no later than six weeks prior to the expiration. Again, the applicant request is to construct an addition and deck extension on their home uh, within the north quarter, uh, 153 north quarter of the Kings Mill subdivision. Loves an aerial photograph um, showing the proposed uh, project location and the topography as it affects the project. Uh, and the resource protection area that has recently been delineated. That was the site plan uh, with RP, uh, RPA delineated here and wetlands being shown down here. There are two trees that are proposed to be removed um, for the construction of this project located here and here. That was a picture uh, facing the house um, where the home addition to be occurring here and the deck expansion on this side. Side view uh, showing where the expansions will occur. and two pictures of the proposed trees to be removed. Again, staff does recommend approval for this, um, this exception, given that all other necessary local, state, and federal permits are required, that a $500 surety is made out acceptable to county attorney's office, uh, and that this, be, this exception become null and void if not started by May 9th, 2019, with extensions requested no later than six weeks prior to the expiration uh, at this time, I'd be happy to take any questions that the board may have. Go back to the last picture uh, that showed the trees. Sir. So where is the approximate limit of the building structure? Approximate limit, um, and the applicant and builder can correct me if I'm wrong, um, should be budding up directly to the trees. Um, appears that the uh, building will stop directly before the base of the trees. The 
area uh, that's highlighted in yellow is where the uh, addition is going to be? Yes, sir. The area in yellow is the proposed addition and deck expansion. So is the addition for deck expansion? Uh, there is um, an addition to the to the bedroom or to a room and uh, adjacent to it, the deck expansion. Um, this side um, will occur a, um, a room expansion, and this deck will also be expanded outwards. Back to the um, plant again, if we could. So the yellow uh, part of that will be for a room extension, and part will be for a deck expansion. Yes, sir. And on the bank, if we go back to the last photo you had, uh, is there going to be anything to stabilize the bank? Are they going to do a uh, retaining wall or anything? Are they just going to ex uh, enlarge it, the footprint where we have it? There's not going to be any other changes. Uh, it is my understanding that that is correct. There, there will be no other changes. How is how stable is the bank behind you as you look at this picture? When I visited the home, I felt that the bank was um, was stable. Um, there didn't appear to be any signs of erosion, um, and uh, vegetation was consistent with the bank. Uh, our mitigation efforts will be recommended or will be required to be put in the RPA uh, for further stabilization. Is that erosion ditch or is that a pipe? I can't see. Uh, this is actually a pipe. I, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to open the public hearing. Uh, would the applicant like to speak on this matter? Board members, I'm Ronald Curtis. I would be doing the uh, building, um, and i would answer any questions you have. Mr. Curtis, um, do you know what the underlying reason is for this expansion on this house? Yeah, the couple's retired, and uh, their children got grandchildren, and that room that's there is only about 11 feet wide, and it's just, that's their family room, and when they have their kids and grandkids, there's not enough room, so they wanted to extend it back, and that's the only way to go, because if you went in ways, you're just creating a longer narrow area so um, that's their main reason for doing it and the deck the same problem is it's not very wide either and they wanted to just equal it out with the room so you could go out that room onto the deck <clears throat> i noticed that the, the you know the downspouts are piped uh, so that they spill beyond the the grass area down slope um, have you given any thought to how you will be treating the runoff from this additional area? We would come, you know, and put a pop-up on it and uh, put some gravel right around the pop-up, and we found that usually is pretty stable. This, he doesn't show below the grass area. This area here is all stable grass. Below that is so many trees that there's probably uh, six or eight inches of leaves. So there really hasn't been any erosion down to the little stream. Trying to make sure that doesn't happen. Right, yes. It, I mean, it's really uh, wooded behind it. And the reason we want to take the two trees down is the house doesn't come back that far, but the tree limbs would hang over the roof. And it's poplar, one of them, and one's a beach, and both of them drop limbs, you know, real bad. So that was the reason for the trees. Uh, it do, they don't have to come out for the uh, building, but the, they're leaning towards the house, as you can see from that picture, and the limbs, they're afraid they'll, you know, go through the roof. You're just going to cut them off and leave the stumps? or Yeah. Yeah. Where to leave the stumps, and uh, there's roots all in that area. Notice that. That's why I didn't. Yeah, they come didn't want to destabilize it anymore. Right. That would. That way, it won't really destroy the bank. Uh, and they're fine with leaving the um, 
stumps and we could do our mitigation plants at the back right before you go to the leaves and uh, that would also ensure stabilization there. Very good. You've answered my questions. Any other questions from the board? No, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any, anyone else like to speak on this matter? Hearing none, the public hearing is closed. Discussion from the board? Like a good plan to me. Do you have a motion? I make a motion that uh, we grant the exception uh, to Chesapeake Bay Board uh, for CBE 18086 at 153 North Quarter. We have a motion to approve. Mr. Chair, before, uh, before you make that, uh, take that vote, uh, staff would like clarification on uh, deleting the affidavit requirement, please. Yes, sir. Uh, my motion would include um, deletion of that affidavit requirement. Thank you for that clarification. Um, we have a motion to approve deleting the condition requiring the affidavit. Can I have a roll call, please? Mr. Rodley? Yes. Mr. Waltrip? Yes. Mr. Hughes? Yes. Motion is approved. Thank you very much. Uh, the next case, CBE-18-0881, Ensign Spence. Um, there is a deferral request, apparently, Mr. Wilson. Correct. Mr. J. Napoleon has requested a one-month deferral so he may work on his uh, application. Uh, staff does concur with that request. Would you like for me to open the public hearing and keep it open? Yes, please. Very good. I will open the public hearing. I see the applicant, and now our public is gone, so um, the item will remain open. Thank you. Um, that is the last public hearing under board considerations. Uh, we uh, mentioned earlier the special condition discussion. Uh, we will table that until next month, uh, where the hopefully have a full board in attendance. Uh, Rodley, uh, do we need to make a motion to defer the resolution? To be safe. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, you can do thank that. Thank you very much. <laughs> motion to defer resolution to grant exception for CBE. Case 18-088. All right. A roll call mm -hmm. for the vote. Mr. Rodley. Yes. Mr. Hughes. Yes. Mr. Waltrip. Very good. Matters of special privilege, hearing none, uh, motion to adjourn. Yes, sir. Thank you. So moved. Adjourn. Thank you. <laughs>